being here. Um, just uh, recap in the weekend. Um, uh, just an amazing weekend with homecoming and all the people we had back on campus. Uh, just amazing atmosphere with the tailgating. Just want to thank all the fans for turning out uh, and supporting us. It was a great atmosphere Saturday night. Um, I'd like to give a special thanks. Uh, I mean, we had a couple injuries in the game, but uh, our, our trainers and our medical staff did an amazing job. Uh, Kennedy McDowell got hurt. Uh, just the way they handled him on the field and getting him to the hospital and making sure that he was taken care of. I just am uh, so thankful for our trainers and our medical staff for looking out for Kennedy. Uh, it was a very physical game. Uh, and on Kennedy, you know, Kennedy uh, was observed Saturday night and uh, we're very fortunate it wasn't worse than it was. And, um, you know, we're expecting to make a full recovery. And so he's out of the hospital and back uh, getting treatment here with our trainers. And we're just very, very fortunate that it wasn't worse. Um, on the game, uh, it was an amazing game, uh, probably one of the most amazing games I've ever been associated at at any level. Um, you know, I think uh, there was there was really waves of excellent play and really waves of inconsistent play uh, in our football. First, we played outstanding in special teams. Uh, really proud of our guys in special teams. Uh, we had a blocked field goal, which is more of a technique thing with how we're protecting that we can correct. Um, but our kids played amazing. Uh, uh, Patty Turner punted the ball, excellent. Uh, our field goal kicking was good, and that was important at the end. Uh, but just really proud of how our guys played in the kicking game, covering kicks and, and playing on special teams. Our defense was outstanding, especially early on and late. Um, the turnovers that we forced in the beginning of the game shows what we're capable of defensively and being disruptive. Um, and then the way we played in the second half, the second half stats are night and day to the first half. Just uh, the way we played better against the run game in the second half. When you play Boise, the quarterback run game is big, and we, we, we really handled that well. Um, and then our third down, I think we shut them out in the second half on third down, which was huge. Um, our offensive stats were night and day, first half to second half. Uh, we, we were very inconsistent in the first half. We didn't respond when our defense got the turnovers. And, um, but we came alive in the second half and really woke up. And I thought Braden was outstanding. Um, he had the one turnover, uh, but the, some of the throws that he made were really, were really elite type throws. Um, our playmakers woke up late. Um, and to come back in the last four minutes the way we did uh, was really a credit to all three phases of our team. And we've been really pressing hard to play as a team, offense, defense, and special teams. And I think uh, the passion that we played with uh, really, really kind of gelled us at the end of the game. And um, it was even more um, – satisfying watching on tape yesterday. Um, there's, there's easily two dozen plays in the last four minutes. If we don't do every one of them correctly, then we have no chance at the last play. Um, and that's on offense, defense, or special teams. Um, so really proud of how we finished and never quit. Um, we challenged the team. Uh, you know, I told them, when we were in Logan, as I watched us play, we looked like a bunch of club fighters. You know, and the definition, that's not a compliment. A de definition of a club fighter is somebody who just fights every, every week but doesn't aspire to be anything more than that, doesn't want to be a champion. And you have to do certain things to, in a game that are difficult to put yourself in position to win. And, um, and I just told, us, told our guys, we don't want to be that. We, we want more. We want to we wanna be looked at as, as a, a quality team that wins tough games. And, um, and we certainly did the things we needed to do at the end of that game to do that against a good team. So that was very satisfying to see. You know, 
at the end, we got to be smarter about the penalty at the end. That could have been very costly after we scored on the Hail Mary. And, um, you know, I just, for what it's worth, I thought I'd throw this out there. I talked to our analytics people. The odds of hitting a Hail Mary at the end of the game is 10%. The odds of getting an onside kick uh, are 10%. The odds of getting a Hail Mary and an onside kick is one out of a thousand. And I shared that with our kids today because it's important. You know, we're, we play a game of situations. We know um, um, that it's, it's, it's very difficult to make all those things happen and put yourself in position to win. Um, you know, we're, we're through the first two quarters of the season. We're working on the second half now, and this is really important. We challenged our kids to stay in the moment. Um, the most important play of every game is the next play. The most important game of every season is the next season, uh, the next game. And so this is a really important game. We're going to play UNLV. They have a new coaching staff. I think Barry Odom's done a really good job with this team. Um, you know, they're five and one right now, I believe. Um, and they've done a tremendous job. They're doing a great job offensively of running the football and scoring points and taking care of the football. Um, defensively, they're, they're playing pretty sound and hard. They're, they're a 3-3-5 three, three, uh, team on defense. And, you know, he's a defensive coach. That's his background. He's always had a great reputation of playing excellent defense. So had a chance to spend some time with Coach Odom, and I was really impressed. I really felt like they would – they were in good hands at UNLV with their coaching staff. So big challenge for us to go to Vegas and play the Rebs. Um, you know, they, they have a quality team, and it's going to be a big challenge for us. You talked about the highs and lows of the game, but for you after the game, what was it like for a coach to, like, celebrate with your team that win, but then you immediately went to the hospital to check on one of your players? Yeah, yeah, it was a late night. Um, you know, it's just your kids, we ask a lot of our kids and, and, and for them to play as hard as they can. You know, we play a different sport. You know, our sport, people get hurt every week and um, sometimes seriously. And so I just really appreciate when our kids put, put their, themselves on the line for us. And so, um, you know, being, being in a winning locker room, there's nothing like it. You can't buy it. It's totally earned, and um, to be able to share that with everybody, I mean, I, I saw a lot of you guys in there as well. Um, it's special um, because there's a lot of hard work and a lot of disappointing times that go in before that and sacrifices before you can experience that. I mean, there's only two things that can get me to dance is my wife and my kids So after a big win. So, but, but – um, that's an amazing thing, but but I was concerned about Kennedy, you know, and I mean, we had a pretty big crew there. I don't know, there's probably over a dozen people waiting at 3.30 in the morning. And and I also think, and it was great to see him, we gave him a game ball, and I had that for him in the hospital. Um, but it was great to see him smiling, you know, smiling and, and kind of laughing. And, it, it, and, you know, you're always concerned when a kid goes down like that. You know, and then Greg Jensen, you know, I, I don't think people really realize is that, you know, when the game's over, their job's not over. I mean, our trainers stayed all night with Kennedy, and, and, and uh, they don't go home. They don't go home to their families, and that's just – that's part of their job, and they do an amazing job of that. So just very appreciative to our medical staff and our trainers for the great work that they do. You mentioned your defense and them being able to create turnovers. They're actually – you've exceeded what you did last year the last two years on pace to beat some of the – what have you seen out of that defense that's made them so opportunistic? Is it a mindset? Yeah, I think it's mindset. I think it's leadership. We have great leadership with, with Jack Howell and Henry Blackburn and Mo Camara. You know, and our coaches uh, have really done a, a really good job of just continuing to bring our guys along. You know, we have a developmental program where we love good people with character and talent, and we want to try to develop them. Uh, and um, they're taking a the next step. And, and, and I told our team at the beginning of camp, I mean, our coaches are going to push you. You know, we, we are trying to do things we haven't done before. Um, 
And, uh, you know, Saturday night, we, we, we hadn't done that before. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're a passing team that plays well in those situations at the end of the game because it's what we do, you know. And so we feel very comfortable in two-minute situations uh, because we practice it a lot, and it's very – it's, it's common for us to get into all those kind of plays. Um, but I, I give our defensive staff credit for putting our guys in position to make plays. And, you know, we recruit playmakers. We're looking for playmakers on defense, offense, and special teams. And, you know, guys like Mo Camara, uh, our playmakers, Chiggy got his first interception. I mean, I mean, those are things that we're trying to create, put them in position to, to really make plays. Talked about you know those playmakers and especially on defense. UNLV scores ninety five percent of the time when they get in the red zone. Um, you know, is there any way to really kind of prevent that, or how do you really look to kind of mitigate some of that success? Yeah, I think you know, I think number one, they're a running team. Uh, they they want to establish the run, um, and then they have a lot of compliments off of what do they do in the run game, and they create explosive plays in the pass game from that. Uh, and they use their playmakers well, and they play at a pretty good tempo. You know, I think we're we're kind of emerging as one of the faster teams in the nation in the way we play. They're they're another team that plays similar to us in that kind of style. Um, unlike the teams we've been seeing, though, um, they're more of a running team, and and similar to Boise. Boise's a running team as well, so they've done a very good job. They're they're the highest scoring team in the league right now. And so we're going to have to we're going to have to get our arms around that and slow them down. Uh, I thought our defense did a great job of adjusting to Boise and and just managing areas of the game. You know, we didn't give up a lot of big plays in the passing game. We didn't give up a lot of quarterback runs. Now their tailback had a, a good night rushing the football, but but you know we just kind of get our arms around those explosive plays and not allow an offense to, to run freely against us. The flip side of your defense grading terms is like they've gotten six in the first half the last two weeks. Your offense hasn't done much with it. Right. That's the next step, isn't it, for you to be a complimentary football team? Yeah, I think, you know, in, in a lot of games, there's kind of a, a feeling out process. And uh, we were really close, a couple third downs in the first half. We just didn't convert to keep drives alive. And then we started to get a feel for what they were doing, and Braden settled down and saw it, and we started executing. I mean, I think we had 50 yards passing in the first half, and we had like 300 in the second half. So, you know, it's just a matter of seeing what they're doing, being able to adjust, making the proper um, adjustments. and um, But we do need to take advantage of that offensively when our defense makes those kind of plays and, and, uh, and score points when we get sudden change. Was it a little tricky? Obviously, you talked Saturday about wanting to establish a run. You had yeah. to do that against Boise, but obviously your running back room is really beat up. Yeah. Is that a tricky balance of trying to figure out the best way to – It is. You know, and, and um, you know, your roster, sometimes you have different guys available different weeks. Kobe did not play. Um, Avery was not available to play. And, um, you know, I've, I've had a chance to sit down with Kobe, and, and we're going to – we're going to redshirt Kobe. Kobe's not going to play the rest of the year. And, and uh, he's got pretty significant wrist injury. Um, and we, you know, we want to give him the best chance to play a full season. So he'll, he will not return. He'll practice with us and be available. Uh, but uh, he, will not, he will not be with us the rest of the season. We do hope to get Avery back this week. And, um, and I have to say, you know, Van Shield has really done a great job stepping up in their absence and you know we may not rush for 200 yards a game but we do have some very important rushes you know we did again this week you know he scored in the red zone and um you know we're just going to keep building on that i i do think and i'm gonna say it again that that our rushing game is going to be important as we go down the stretch um we're going to have to make some significant runs and some of that's by choice because we have a lot of good playmakers and we like to throw the ball to them but when we do choose to run the ball, we need to be effective at it. What are some things you're looking to work on in practice this week? It's a great question. You know, I think, you know, when you get to this point of the year, you're very specific in the game plan. And we want to really, you know, do a great job in our run defense this week because we're going to play an opponent that 
that uh, loves to run the football. Uh, and they, they try to window dress and give you a lot of pre-snap looks and motion and shifts. <clears throat> and so it's, it's just getting dialed into those tendencies. You know, offensively, we want to continue to bring some of these younger players along. And, um, you know, and it's going to be important for us to spread the football around. Uh, you know, uh, Lewis Brown showed up last week. I was proud of how he responded in the game. We should get Justice back. He's had a hand injury the last couple of weeks and didn't play as much. We want to get those guys back involved in the game, in the game plan, get their hands on the ball. And, and uh, we should get Avery back. We want to get him back in the groove. So, you know, it's, it's like, like every team we have injuries and um, we're going to try to fill in those gaps with kids, younger kids or kids that are coming back off injury. You talked about how you and OB will look to run. Can you kind of maybe knock them out of that by starting fast? And is that something you guys are going to look to do on Saturday? Yeah, we always want to start fast, and, and that's really important. And uh, I don't know, I think the last few games we've taken the ball because um, I really did want to start fast. And, and so I, I just feel like we have a sense of urgency as a team. Um, you know, I can't wait to get back on a practice field just so we could start working on what we're doing this week. And we don't waste a lot of time in practice. You know, we have a sense of urgency. We're not where we want to be as a team. We know we can improve a lot, and we know how important this opportunity is. So we want to start fast offensively. I love playing in Vegas. And I, I, I used to be in the state of Nevada, and we used to go down there all the time. I love playing in it. Allegiant Stadium, and, and um, uh, I mean, I have a history with the Raiders, and I know a lot of people there, and I know uh, Coach Al would have loved that place. So um, I, I always look forward to playing there, and we played very well there. We won the first college game there, um, and so uh, we, we're excited to go back. Your off is, oh, go ahead. Offensive numbers, obviously, overall are pretty good, but do you still feel your – you know, almost in the early stages between Braden being a young guy, you got guys like LB, Goffney coming on, the running game. There's no question. I think we have a lot of young players, and, you know, and Torrey's kind of a veteran, and Dallin, you would consider him a veteran. But I really think the emergence of some of those young players is really going to show us what we can be as an offense completely. And, and this offense is best, really, when you're spreading the ball around all five guys, and whether it's running – you know, the running backs get as many touches catching the ball as they do running the ball when we're really clicking. And so we're not quite there yet. Um, you know, I think Braden, you know, Braden is further along than we thought he would be, you know, for a guy that's only played, what, four or five games, five, six games starting. Um, but he's seen a lot of defenses and he's learned quickly. He's a real quick study and um, he's competitive and, and he, He's not afraid, and so um, we got to keep building on his performance. We got to keep training him what to expect. Um, you know, these guys are good coaches, and so you know they're they're going to do what they feel like to do to slow us down, and, and we're going to have to counter with that with ways we can continue to be productive. You know, a lot has been made of Dallin's catch at the end of the game. But when you look at LB's catch, yeah, that was a high degree of difficulty too. No doubt. What are you seeing in him and his development? I'm really proud of LB. You know, we challenged him last week. He played super at Colorado and uh, had a hundred yard game. <laughs> Excuse me. And he's kind of last couple of weeks. He's kind of hasn't been as productive. And so, you know, we really challenged him last week and told him that he was going to have to step up and make plays on the other side of Tory. Um, Justice was a little beat up and wasn't going to play much. And we really needed him and, and Dylan Goffney to kind of make plays complimentary to, to Torrey and to Dallin. So uh, he's very capable. Uh, he's a really good route runner. He's got good speed and he's got great hands and he's capable of making big plays. And so, you know, I just think if we can get Justice and LB and Dylan uh, and get Avery back, um, that that can make us more explosive. Is it part of the process with players? I mean, LB, he showed last year he can make people miss with that catch. He showed he can make the tough catch. But some guys, you got to keep kind of pushing their buttons when they're young, right? It's consistency, you know, and I think that's what makes the special player special is they do it all the time, you know. Um, you know, I, 
I learned a lot from reading and, and I read the Cubs way and, and that was one of the, the building blocks the Cubs tried to do when they first built their team. And um, when you got a, high, a guy with high talent and high character, you never have to worry about him being productive. And that's, that's what a Torrey Horton is. That's what a Dallin Hoker is. Those guys have high character and great talent and they, they're always gonna be productive in every game. And so um, we got to get LB to that, you know, his practice habits, his way he studies the game plan and how he prepares for each game. It's got to be consistent. You know, it can't be up and down. And uh, once he gets there, he'll have that same type of productivity week in and week out. Does this game feel a little weird for you? Because every other time you faced you in LB, it was like a big rivalry. Game. Yeah. It's – it's a little different, you know. Um, it was a big rivalry when when we were at Nevada and we were playing for the Cannon, and, and, and there's a lot that went into that. Um, I'm, I'm just excited to go back there. I, I really I really do love to go to Vegas. I love to play at Allegiant Stadium. I think they did a great job with that stadium, and it's a, it's a different venue. It's not a college venue. It's a pro venue, but it's a great. I think it's a great experience for our players to play in a pro venue like that. And, and um, our guys love it. You know, our guys like that kind of spotlight. And and um, I think they really look forward to it. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Jim.